Normalization is a set of rules that we follow when designing a database to reduce data redundancy and improve data integrity. Let's dig in and take a closer look at what normalization is all about and how we can apply it to our database design. The rules for normalization are known as forms, and there's five of them, although most of your benefit in normalization comes from the first three forms, so that's what most database designers will shoot for, is to get your database into the third normal form. Usually anything more than that is overkill or won't apply to your database. Normalizing your database design brings with it three primary benefits that all work towards the same goal of creating small, focused tables. The first benefit and reason to normalize is to eliminate redundant data. Redundant data in the same table or even across tables can increase storage and decrease performance. Redundant data can also cause us grief here with this next one, and that is data modification anomalies. There are three kinds of these anomalies, one for each data modification statement. So there's an insert anomaly, an update anomaly, and a delete anomaly, and they're all caused because you're trying to do too much in a table. You're trying to store two different sets of facts in the same table, which can again lead to data integrity issues. And finally, normalization ensures that the data dependencies between our columns and our tables make sense, which can greatly simplify the queries that will be written against our database. Now, the best way to actually go about normalizing your database design is to do it table by table. Start with the table and start with normal form number one, and then move through all the way up to whatever normal form you are aiming for. Let's look at some examples beginning with first normal form. Here we have an orders table, and this is the same table designed just a little bit differently, but both of these designs violate first normal form. Here are the three requirements for first normal form. Number one, the data is in a database table. We're good there. But I will mention that it does help to actually look at data so you can visually see some of the problems that you may not initially see by looking at the design of a table. And if you're trying to improve the design of an existing database by sending it through normalization, that's pretty easy because you'll probably have data to look at. But if you're working with a new design, you probably won't have any data inside of it. And that's where you can go out and uh, there's all kinds of data generators out there and fill it up with just dummy data. And that way, again, you can eyeball it to see, oh, look, there's redundant data all over the place. Or, oh, look, there's a cluster of null values. And, uh, and that'll you know help you get a little insight there uh, when visually attempting normalization. So just a little side note there, but we're good. Our data is in a database table. Number two, one or more columns is the primary key used to uniquely identify a record. Our second table is good there, right? We meet that we have a primary key on order ID. Our first table does not. We do not have a primary key, so we would need to put one right there. The third one is the big one here for first normal form. Each column contains atomic values, meaning the value cannot further be broken down, and there are no repeating groups of columns. Both of these violate this third rule here. Our first table has an item IDs column, which you could think of as item IDs separated by a delimiter, like a comma or a semicolon. Our second one violates it because we have a repeating group of columns, item ID 1, 2, and 3. This is poor design because we're going to have a lot of null values if we're only selling one item. And what if we need a fourth or fifth or sixth item? We're in trouble here. This design does not lend itself to that. So the root cause of this problem is that when a customer makes an order, they can order X number of items. And we're trying to represent that relationship within the orders table itself, which isn't going to work. A proper solution here would be to break that out into its own separate table. So now we have essentially an order header table that contains information just about the order itself and the customer who ordered it. And then we have an order items table that will contain a record for every single item, line item, on that order. And that's why we have a one to many relationship here between an order and the order items. Moving on, let's look at second normal form. Now let's take our orders table once again and let's say we need more information about the customer. So we added first name, last name, and address into our orders table. Now there's two rules for second normal form. The first one is that the table is in first normal form. Is it? Let's find out here. Do we have a primary key? We do, so we're good there. Do we have any repeating groups of columns? Nope, we're good there. And each one of these columns contains atomic values. Good, so we're good there. What if we were just created a customer name rather than first name and last name? Would that have been atomic? No, it wouldn't have been because it would just would have been name. So we broke that down into first name and last name. And yes, this meets first normal form. What about the second one here? 
all of the non-key columns are dependent on the table's primary key. In other words, we can have no partial dependencies. Let's test it out. What about customer ID? Does that depend on the primary key? This is an orders table, so an order is placed by a customer. So yes, customer ID absolutely depends on the order ID. What about these next three, first name, last name, address? Do they depend on that order ID? No, they depend on the customer ID, right? First name, last name, and address are tied to the customer, not the order. So these three fields, columns, do not belong in this table. What about order date? Yep, that's good. That describes the date that the order was placed. And what about order total? Absolutely. That also describes the, uh, the amount of this order. This is another area where seeing the actual data can really help you identify problems with tables that aren't in second normal form because you will see a lot of redundant data in those columns that don't depend on the primary key. And by the way, here is the solution. Again, we take those columns, those columns that are redundant, and place them into their own table. So here we should have a customer's table with the customer ID as the primary key linked to that customer ID, which will be the foreign key in that orders table. So you can see the process is really just breaking things down creating more tables that are all focused on containing just their data elements. Moving on to third normal form, let's take our customers table and say that we wanted to add some more columns into here to track exactly where customers live so we could deliver them our products. Here are the two rules for third normal form. Again, the first one is that the table is in second normal form, which it is for the most part. One could argue that city should actually probably have a cities table linked through city ID, which we'll do here in a second. But the uh, the second rule here is the big one, that there are no transitive functional dependencies against the primary key. And you're probably asking yourself, what the heck is a transitive dependency? Think of it as something that depends on something through something else. And that's why I put in parentheses here, non-key fields are directly dependent on the primary key. So once again, you want to go through each one of these columns that you've defined and ask yourself, does that depend on the primary key? First name, last name, address, city, they all depend on that customer. They describe exactly where that customer lives. State, however, has a transitive dependency on customer ID through the city and country through the state, which state through the city. So these last two here are transitively dependent on the customer ID. The city already describes where the customer lives, but the state requires the city and the country requires the state. So that's why these two should not belong inside of this customer's table. So a better way to describe this would be to break each one of those dependencies off into their own table. So now we can link the city table through the city ID, the state to the city table, and the country to the state table. And again, the effect that this will have is dramatically reducing the amount of redundant data that we would have had in our previous customer table design. So you can see the whole process of normalization is just continuing to break things down as far as you can go until every single table is its own focused entity. And here's the final logical design of our NLDB database taken down to the third normal form. So those three tables that we looked at in a previous nugget have really been broken down here into many more tables. So most of these we've gone through in this nugget, but I just want to point out here that we took color name and put that into its own table to reduce the amount of redundancy there with colors. And same with suppliers. We did just have supplier name, but we also broke that into its own table, which also gives us an opportunity to track more information about our suppliers. And that's that. We are now ready to transform this into a physical database. In this CBC Nugget, we talked about the benefits that normalization provides to our database designs and also how to take a table and send it through the first three normal forms. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.